Hi everybody, Edward here from renegadeinvestor.co.uk and today we're going to be talking about 10 reasons why I personally believe Bitcoin price will destroy all-time highs in 2017. Before that though, a quick recap. 2016 was without a doubt a stellar year for Bitcoin as the fundamentals supporting the network continued to grow and strengthen. In late 2015 I released my video why Bitcoin price could hit all time highs in 2016 and a lot of the reasons I listed came to fruition as the price climbed 200% finishing the year just shy of $1000 and tagging all time highs in the first week of 2017. In 2016, not only did we see the war on cash continue to escalate and go global, but we also had the Bitcoin mining reward happening, dropping new Bitcoin supply and inflation by 50% in Q2 and Q3. On top of this, the technical and market tone both strengthened, as well as the ongoing anti-establishment trend with Brexit and Trump, raising geopolitical and economic uncertainty. So with all that behind us, let's take a look at the main reasons that I believe will drive the Bitcoin price well beyond its all-time highs in 2017. Without a doubt, one of the biggest fundamental drivers of the Bitcoin price in 2017 will be demonetization and the ongoing global war on cash, as insolvent governments become more and more desperate and globalist bankers push for their ultimate dream of a monopoly on the medium of exchange. 2016 highlighted to the world just how widespread and dangerous the global war on cash could become. We saw the ECB decommission the creation of any new 500 euro notes, Australia proposed a ban on their $100 bill, and elitist banker shill academics like Larry Summers and Kenneth Rogoff pushed for the removal of the US $100 bill. We also saw the disastrous human consequences of the war on cash as Venezuela postponed the removal of the widely used 100 Bolivar note as desperate people already suffering with hyperinflation took to the streets in protest. In addition to this we also witnessed a devastation in India as Prime Minister Modi overnight banned the use of the 500 and 1000 rupee note which constitutes 86% of the cash in circulation in a country where only 50% of people have bank accounts. The end result? Hundreds dead and a massive reduction in economic activity which will affect the country for years to come. So how do we know this trend will continue and be a major fundamental pushing the price of Bitcoin in 2017? Why? Because government debt levels are correlated with capital controls and there is no sign of a slowdown in global debt. In fact, it's possible to predict where the war on cash will likely hit next by looking at the most indebted governments and countries worldwide as these countries will be most desperate to implement negative interest rate policy and capital controls to increase taxation and service debt. As you can see from this chart, which shows global debt to GDP ratios, I have highlighted the countries I believe are most at risk, including the Eurozone where the European Commission recently announced a proposal for an initiative to restrict cash payments. Whilst I am not a fan of fiat currency in any form, in my opinion, the war on cash is totalitarianism dressed up as a moral crusade, and because Bitcoin offers the same peer-to-peer -peer value transfer utility as cash, its continuation will potentially push the Bitcoin price much higher in 2017. Another reason I am very bullish on Bitcoin in 2017 is the possibility of Bitcoin gold price parity. As you can see from this chart created by Zero Hedge, Bitcoin price recently tagged the price of gold for a second time and 2017 looks like it could be the year where Bitcoin finally surpasses and stays above the paper gold spot price. Now before we go any further, in the short and medium term I am actually still bullish on gold silver as well as bitcoin as fundamentals driving both markets are similar in my opinion. In addition to this I am aware that in reality this is not really a true comparison when you take into account the much larger supply and market cap of gold which is approximately 6 billion troy ounces and 8 trillion dollar market cap versus bitcoin's 16 million unit supply not excluding lost coins and its 15 billion market cap. However, the reason Bitcoin gold price parity could be very bullish for Bitcoin in 2017 is the psychological effects it will have on current gold holders and the wider population. First, it will create a huge amount of mainstream media coverage, adding to the already bullish Bitcoin market tone. Second, it will add to the conversation that Bitcoin started 8 years ago on the very nature of money and currency and why sound money is so important. Third, people will begin to take Bitcoin's safe haven attributes more seriously than ever as comparisons are drawn to Bitcoin as a type of digital gold. 
people will begin to realize that in the long run, Bitcoin has superior attributes that could genuinely challenge gold's multiple thousand year role as a primary store of value and counterparty and inflation hedge asset. Another big reason Bitcoin gold price parity could have a big psychological effect is due to admitted and alleged long term manipulation in the precious metal space. Bitcoin's continued price rise could really add to the frustration of gold holders which could lead to diversification into Bitcoin from even the most tenacious of gold bugs as they give in to building FOMO. To put it into perspective just how much this could affect Bitcoin price, even a 1% capital inflow from gold into Bitcoin would add $85 billion to its market cap, taking it over $6,000 per coin from current levels. Add to this the growing risk of civil asset forfeiture which is heightened when holding physical assets and you have a scenario that could seriously support much higher Bitcoin prices in 2017. Another reason that could support much higher Bitcoin prices in 2017 is due to the fact that Bitcoin continues to establish itself as a recognized asset class which is attracting more institutional investment. As infrastructure matures and Bitcoin dominance climbs once again, 2017 may be remembered as buying begets buying as the increase in Bitcoin market cap and liquidity opens up market viability to much larger funds and investors. Evidence to support this recently came from the most funded Bitcoin company Bitfury Group which recently turned down a myriad of over-the-counter Bitcoin sale requests by funds and high-profile investors. The importance of this in relation to the Bitcoin price is that over-the-counter trades mass the true demand for Bitcoin which is largely measured by exchange statistics. So if we continue to see institutional interest growing and over-the-counter sales dry up due to increasing demand and due to the fact that in a bull market it's preferential to hold Bitcoin over US dollars or any other fiat currency, we may see institutional investors turn to Bitcoin exchanges to accumulate on dips, preventing large pullbacks and pushing the spot price up globally. If exchanges can adjust trading limits to compensate for the potential big increase in demand, this could be another big reason that pushes the Bitcoin price well beyond its all-time high in 2017. Not to be outcompeted by China, Japan's interest in Bitcoin appears to be growing in 2017, which can only be bullish for Bitcoin as the world's third biggest economy steps up its interest and investment. Not only has Japan started to see a surge in Bitcoin retail adoption, expected to quadruple in 2017 and a 9000% increase in Bitcoin payments, but we have also seen Japan's largest internet conglomerate GMO announce plans for Bitcoin services and infrastructure investment which will dramatically legitimize Bitcoin in the eyes of Japanese investors. On top of this, Bitcoin trading in Japanese yen continues to surge as Singaporean based exchange key owned trading volume climbed to match Japan's leading exchange Bitflyer. Whilst it must be noted volume could be elevated due to the no fee trading policy currently active on these exchanges, with Japan set to potentially drop the current 8% consumption tax on Japanese Bitcoin exchanges, we could see Japanese trading volume explode even higher in the coming year. Add to this the risk of potential capital controls in Japan because of their position as one of the most indebted countries in the world when looking at global debt to GDP ratios and you have yet another scenario that could put a huge amount of buying pressure under the Bitcoin price in 2017. It is with no surprise that an increase in block size capacity will have a huge effect on investor confidence with regards to Bitcoin scaling and the potential upside Metcalf value of the Bitcoin network. With the artificial limit of 1 megabyte blocks limiting the Bitcoin transaction limit to 7 per second and putting a cap on the viable user base of the network since 2009. In 2017 an upgrade to the Bitcoin core protocol named Segregated Witness could finally answer scaling concerns. Around 25% of blocks are currently signaling for segregated witness and is signaled by 95% majority by November 2017. This updated version of the core protocol will facilitate a technical doubling of the block size and lay the foundations for future innovation and further scaling. In my opinion, it would be fair to say that just like the Bitcoin halvening in 2016, which reduced new Bitcoin supply by 50%, the adoption of segregated witness could potentially be the most Bitcoin bullish event of 2017 if it takes place in the face of Bitcoin unlimited resistance. 
One of the reasons for this, as well as facilitating on-chain scaling, is the fact that Segregated Witness provides the prerequisites needed for Network Layer 2 scaling solutions, such as a Lightning Network, which could potentially scale Bitcoin transactions up to 100,000 transactions per second. To put that into perspective, the Visa network currently averages 2,000 transactions per second and MasterCard 20 to 40,000 transactions per second. Whilst there is no guarantee of its adoption, if Segregated Witness reaches 95% signaling by November 2017, expect a huge increase in the Bitcoin price as investor confidence spikes. Another reason that could push the Bitcoin price in 2017 is the growing realization that the blockchain revolution was always about Bitcoin and its ability to completely disintermediate expensive, slow, fraudulent and corrupted centralized institutions. Starting in 2015, financial institutions and the mainstream financial media pushed the blockchain not Bitcoin narrative to promote a white collar private version of the technology underlying Bitcoin having the effect of diverting a lot of attention and investment away from the Bitcoin ecosystem. However, this attempt to discredit the Bitcoin blockchain as simply a stepping stone to a centralized solution appears to be falling apart as the Bitcoin blockchain ecosystem surges in popularity. Due to justified concerns around centralized security, trust, infighting at private blockchain consortiums and prominent banks leaving these groups, it appears the private blockchain narrative is starting to weaken. In addition to this, there are 70 competing private blockchain projects which would lead to an interoperability headache in the future, as well as what looks like unavoidable complexity. Whilst the banks will resist, in my opinion, the world is about to turn back to the trustless Bitcoin blockchain as the obvious choice for an open source level playing field that will act as a global standard. Due to this and the growing likelihood of news coverage and investment getting refocused back towards Bitcoin in 2017, it's yet another reason that could push Bitcoin prices well above its all-time highs in 2017. As leader of the free world, a Trump presidency could potentially be beneficial for Bitcoin as we enter 2017. It is widely acknowledged that due to regulatory arbitrage, the country that offers current and future reassurances on hands-off regulation will dominate Bitcoin industry and entrepreneurship in the future. Whilst nothing is guaranteed, in my opinion, the Trump election eases the risk of a draconian crackdown on Bitcoin in the US, which would have been far more likely under a Wall Street puppet, big government Clinton presidency. On top of this, Trump has followed through on his campaign commitment to reducing regulatory red tape in his two-for-one plan to reduce two regulations for every one new. If this regulatory free market ethos continues through his presidency, it reduces the risk of regulatory interference for Bitcoin companies. In addition to this, there are three noteworthy administration picks by Trump that could have a positive influence on his understanding and approach to Bitcoin in 2017. The first is his pick for budget chief, Senator Mick Mulvaney, who has heavy investments in gold and has been a long-standing critic of the Federal Reserve. Even more remarkably, he praised Bitcoin for not being manipulable by governments. The second is early Bitcoin investor and PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, who has been appointed to Trump's transition team, initiating speculation that he may tap other Bitcoin-affiliated people into influential positions in the Trump administration. Third is the possible but still pending Balaji Srinivasan, Bitcoin entrepreneur and co-founder of 21.co, one of the most well-funded Bitcoin companies in the world. As a contender for leader of the Food and Drug Administration, his appointment would add to more pro-Bitcoin influence surrounding the president. Whilst there are no guarantees, if the Trump administration holds off and even provides reassurances of a moratorium on future Bitcoin regulation, it could create a regulatory benchmark forcing many other countries to follow suit if they want to compete for the future industry surrounding digital currencies and the blockchain. Finally, add to this talks of tax cuts, infrastructure renewal and deficit spending from the Trump administration on top of the already unsustainable 20 trillion US debt and you have yet another reason that could help force Bitcoin prices much higher in 2017. 
it's fair to say that China has played a pivotal role in the growth and price of Bitcoin over the last few years and 2017 looks like it's going to be no exception. In my opinion, one of the big drivers for this is the growing awareness both inside and outside of China of the extreme levels of debt and credit issuance which is outgrowing GDP growth in China. To put the debt into perspective, as we enter 2017, China's debt is around $30 trillion and a massive 300% debt to GDP. The big risk here is that China could be about to experience what the West experienced in 2008. If their economy slows whilst debt and credit issuance explodes, it will lead to debt destruction, loan delinquency and a massive increase in non-performing loans which could put their banking sector at huge risk. So why is this so bullish for the Bitcoin price in 2017? Because the main options for the Chinese government to prevent this type of scenario is to keep reducing reserve rate requirements at banks to extend even more credit and or engaging QE to support the already inflated demand side of the economy which is now $3 for every dollar of growth. Or the Chinese government could end up with a potentially huge economic collapse on their hands and subsequent currency debasement to refinance and bail out the banking sector like we saw in the West following the 2008 financial crisis. Either way, the potential threat of both of these scenarios are bullish for Bitcoin and bearish for the value of the Yuan, which has seen a 12.65% drop since 2014 against the US dollar. In addition to this, China is one of the main trading hubs of the world and a potential slowdown here would destroy the recovery narrative in the West as global growth stores, thus making Bitcoin an even more attractive hedge all over the world. Another reason why the threat of a bank bailout scenario is so bullish for Bitcoin is due to the fact it would heighten the risk of capital controls in China as government sector debt would explode further, creating yet another reason for Chinese depositors to hedge risk in Bitcoin. To put it into perspective on just how bullish the risk of a Chinese slowdown could be for Bitcoin in 2017, whilst Chinese capital flight is often cited as a main driver of Bitcoin price, this process has barely even begun. With Bitcoin currently at a $16 billion market cap and Chinese deposits totaling $22 trillion, we have not yet even began to see significant capital inflows from China into Bitcoin. Whilst it's extremely difficult to predict the end of this secular bull market in bonds due to excessive intervention from central banks, at some point, the global bond market will overcome central banks to price in risk and a lot of analysts are predicting that 2017 could be the year this begins. So why is this potentially bullish for the Bitcoin price in 2017? With what looks like very limited upside left in the bond market and the prospect of higher interest rates going forward, the first way this could be bullish for Bitcoin was highlighted by Bitcoin investor and serial entrepreneur Vinnie Lingham in his recent article titled Bitcoin 2017, a currency devaluation hedge for emerging markets. He points out that if interest rates rise strengthening the dollar, it will have the opposite effect on emerging market currencies, making the prospect of holding Bitcoin much more attractive, which will create buying momentum in those countries. Secondly, the global bond market is huge, around $200 trillion. If even a tiny amount of capital rotates out of this market in anticipation of a sell-off and finds its way into Bitcoin, it could have a significant effect on the Bitcoin market cap, which currently sits at $16 billion. There is another scenario, however, that could play out in the bond market, which I would still consider bullish for Bitcoin in what appears to be a win-win situation. With the possibility of high deficit spending along with higher interest rates hitting an already huge 20 trillion US debt bubble as well as the risk of emerging market countries selling US treasuries to support their own currencies, Andy Hoffman from MilesFranklin.com states that this could lead the Federal Reserve to double down on QE4 to try and keep interest rates suppressed. If this were to happen, it would result in a loss of huge credibility for the Fed and other central banks that engage in the same practice, as more people recognise that artificial stimulus can never be unwound. As a result, it would push more and more people to hedge in Bitcoin against terminal fiat currencies in 2017. 
As we enter 2017, another reason why I really think we're going to see higher Bitcoin prices is because of the bullish outlook on the technicals. As you can see from this one day chart of Bitcoin on Bitfinex, we have been in this uptrend channel throughout 2016, supported by strong long term support going all the way back to August 2015. And as long as this support holds, I remain bullish technically. As you can see from this chart, 2016 technically was really defined by these two ascending triangles and two breakouts that happened throughout the year. Each time they consolidated for about six months before an explosive breakout and it looks like the latest one could be leading us into a third ascending triangle, which is a potentially bullish formation when the price is in an uptrend. So if we are in a third ascending triangle here, the question is how long will the price consolidate at this level? A similar consolidation timescale to the one seen in 2016 would lead us to a breakout in around Q2 or late Q2, which would bring us to the end of the ascending triangle formation. However, there is one reason why I think we could potentially see a breakout of all time highs before the end of Q2. The reason for this is due to the fact that because the price has previously spent so little time at these price levels, there could be a lot fewer sellers trying to break even from the huge pump and last all time highs in late 2013. In addition to this, many of the people who bought at the highs last time may have unfortunately sold at lower levels and cut their losses after not viewing or recognizing that Bitcoin is a long term investment. Now, if we convincingly break all time highs on high volume, technically it is going to be mega bullish for Bitcoin. Not only will traders take significant long positions, but at this point, everyone who is still holding Bitcoin will be in profit and unlikely to sell expecting a much higher price. It will also have the knock on effect of drying up sell orders on the exchanges, potentially leading to slippage and big green candles. The price move could also be exacerbated by more people buying for the first time on market hype as a break of all time highs would lead to a deluge of news coverage from all major financial and alternative news outlets, which could lead to a significant FOMO event. In conclusion, if long term technical support holds and we see a breakout to the upside through all time highs, the technicals could influence a huge influx of capital into Bitcoin in 2017. So on to price predictions for 2017. Before we start, I just want to make clear that I don't give financial advice under any circumstance. All the information and analysis I provide are based purely on my own personal opinions of the market. In addition, research the best storage techniques to reduce the risk of holding Bitcoin and avoid leaving large amounts of Bitcoin on exchanges and centralized services for extended periods. With that said, I am personally very bullish on Bitcoin in 2017. To predict what price Bitcoin could hit this year, it helps to understand where Bitcoin could be on the S-curve adoption timescale, which is often used to predict technology adoption patterns. In my first video in 2015, I posted this chart pointing out that in the near future, Bitcoin could be approaching the exponential growth curve of S-curve adoption. And in 2017, others are also making this observation, including prolific Bitcoin investor Brock Pierce in this interview with Max Kaiser. So, you know, in technology, there's always the fabled hockey stick moment yeah. where suddenly there's, you know, adoption kicks in and you have exponential rocket ship to the moon type of thing. Uh, when is Bitcoin going to hit that? Have we done it already? I don't think so. No, I think it's 2017. Okay. I think 2013 was a false start, um, but I, I, I feel like this is, this is it. I feel we're, we're on the launch pad. I feel, you know, we're, okay, we're, so we're, we're ready to break out and mass adoption. So if we are about to hit the exponential growth curve where growth is equal to value, it would not be unrealistic to see the Bitcoin price in the multiple thousand range by the end of 2017. And whilst this may seem unrealistic for the uninitiated, you have to remember that there is a very limited supply of Bitcoin and a huge $365 trillion in all other major asset classes that are at or near all time high valuations. Based on this, if we breach all time highs, 2000 would be my lower bound estimate and we could easily head up to three or 4000 if the market gets some big momentum behind it. This is also the price range predicted by Vinnie Lingham whose past predictions have dubbed him the Bitcoin Oracle. This price area would also bring us back in line with the Metcalf value of the network, which I believe Bitcoin has been trading at a discount to ever since Mt. Gox in 2014, when the Metcalf value to Bitcoin price ratio deviated from 1 to 1 to a 10 to 1 ratio. 
In fact, in order for Bitcoin to hit the $3,000 mark, the market would only need to capture around $30 billion from its current market cap of $15 billion, which is not a huge amount when you take into account all the reasons listed in this video. And that is why I think this bull market has a long way to run in 2017. So that concludes the main reasons why I believe Bitcoin price will destroy all time highs in 2017. Whilst the risk of government interference is always there, along with network growing pains, the sheer amount of fundamentals driving this market are building by the day. With a possible ETF approval in March, strong growth in India, the return of the Greek debt crisis, a populist rising in France and a whole range of developing use cases. Whilst 2009 may have been the best time to get into Bitcoin, in my opinion, the next best time could be right now.